that Jesus is in our lives. And it's just been overwhelming and just good. And I'm so thankful for all that Jesus is. He's everything. Amen. You know, I could take uh, um, so many different directions on this, but I, 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 is um, Nicolette, is Pax, you and Pax are here, someone said. Yeah, come here, Natalie. All three of you, all, all of you guys, come on up here real quick. And um, Bobby, can you reach me, that, or Rick, reach me that mic? I'm, I'm going to title the uh, sermon and the message that God has put in my heart, Jesus is the Healer. Jesus is the healer. And we couldn't finish this, uh, this series or, or move past this series on Jesus without kind of talking about it. And I don't know who wants to talk, but we need to share the miracle story of Pax and what God's done in his life. We've all been praying. and Yes. I just want to thank every one of you for all your prayers. This is really, truly a miracle. Um, God's still in the miracle business. Yes. <laughs> if you're praying for a miracle, God hears every, every prayer, and he goes before us, and he works it out. And I kid, it would just take too long to tell you, but um, his hand was on this entire pregnancy and on Pax mm -hmm. the entire way through. I mean, one miracle after the other. The doctors didn't tell us that. The doctors kept telling us worse and worse and worse and worse and worse as it got closer. But our God, <laughs> but our God is so amazing. And Pax means peace. And God provided peace the entire time. It's just really... Um, it's literally a miracle that you can have peace Amen. in a storm. Yes. And we were so blessed. And thank you. Thank you, all of you, Pastor, every, every prayer. And we felt the prayers. And you know, that's another thing. When just coming together as a body of Christ and praying for one another is a critical thing. Sometimes we think, what can we do? Mm -hmm. Pray. Pray, all of us, come yeah. together, because your prayer matters. And I believe that it was the body of this church, it was the body of Christ, that we have this little testimony right here today. Amen. I really do. It was the grace of God. Yeah. So we just give God all the glory, all the glory. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So can, can you... Uh... Tell us, you know, what, what was the miracle here? What happened? Okay. Are you going to hold it here? Um, yeah. So, you can do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we were, uh, we, were, we were told that, you know, Pax was going to need uh, surgery uh, once he was born, uh, life-saving surgery. And, I mean, that was, like, daunting news to hear. Um, so, you know, just riding it out day by day until he was born. Um, and, uh, I mean, everything, it just went. I'm sorry? When he was four days old, he had his surgery. Yeah, when he was four days old, he had a surgery, and, um, and everything went well. I mean, it was about four hours of the surgery time, um, but the doctors, they did such a great job. Um, uh, the best team at John Hopkins, um, between the care for Nicolette for her uh, C-section to uh, Pax's delivery, um, I mean, it was the greatest team, and I, I truly believe that God was in that room uh, for Nicolette and for Pax. And, each day giving us the strength to get through this. It was not easy, um, but here we are today. I'm sorry. So I just want to say real quick that um, he was originally due on my birthday, which is May 26th, and he was born April 21st. So at 35 weeks, he was six pounds, four ounces. So I prayed for supernatural growth the whole pregnancy, and to be born that early and that weight is really a miracle. Um, and then every, my mom just kept praying, like, nothing missing, nothing lost, everything, you know, redeemed. And we got home from the hospital, out of the NICU, everything on my birthday, his due date. And so really nothing was missing, nothing was lost, or, um, <laughs> and it was just perfect. God brought us home on that day when my mom was like, you could have still been in the hospital having him. So we were home together. Um, I'm healed. He healed up great. And just every prayer truly was answered. And it was such specific prayers. And God just showed up every time. 
Um, so he's so good. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a great big thank you, everybody. The Lord is good. I love you. You know, um, we've got a, uh, a group called the Called Out Believers, and uh, it's a prayer intercessory group. And the, the prayer uh, messages kept coming in of everything that was going on, and they weren't giving a lot of hope to them, but God was filling our lives with hope through all the prayers. And uh, it's just a miracle just to look at that little baby and see God's healing power. And I'm going to title the message today, Jesus is the Healer. And we're going to look at the life of Jesus. When Jesus walked on the earth, more than two-thirds of his ministry was healing the sick. You know, it was 30 years old when Jesus was baptized. He spent three and a half, three years, three and a half years doing ministry walking the earth. From the time that John baptized Jesus in the River Jordan and the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. At that point began the miracles and the healings and the supernatural things. And we see all through Jesus' life the miracles of God. And in Acts 10, 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. This life of Christ, this life of Jesus, was consumed with healing the sick. I could take the whole service and tell you story after story after story in my life how as a young boy, God's healed me, God's restored me. So many things that I went through in my, in my childhood and in my younger years, even in my adulthood with my heart going to V-fib and me dropping dead on the ground and being dead for 15 minutes and God raising me from the dead. When I look at all the things the Lord has done, I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to change my position on healing. Jesus is the healer. Healing was the major part of the ministry of Jesus, but that doesn't mean it was the most important part. The cross was the most important part, right? The most important thing that Jesus ever did was the cross. When he gave his life on the cross and he resurrected from the dead. The most important thing that Jesus ever did. Jesus taught us how to live victorious in a cursed world. I mean, all of us realize we're living in a cursed world, right? Like everywhere you look, every, you go into rooms and you just look around the room and you look in the faces of the, the people that are so lost and without God. Every, everything on the media, everything that you're listening to on the, on the news is all negativity. It's all this cursed world that we're living in. But Jesus said, in him we can have victorious life. We can live above the reproach of this world. And I'm so thankful for the healing of God. Every good thing that happens in our lives comes by way of the cross. When you begin to look at it, the blessings in heaven, the blessings of heaven that come into our lives are because of the cross. It's the atoning work of the cross. The, the healing that we are made, has been made available to the body of Christ is because of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ at the cross. In 1 Peter 2.24, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sin, may live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. It's the atoning work of Christ. The Bible records that whole multitudes sought to touch him. And if they could touch him, there was a power that went out and healed them all. Every time one of the sick people touches Christ, healing and virtue flowed from his body and was released into that person. And they were healed and they were overjoyed. That's a powerful image to have in your mind. That every time... A sick person touched Jesus, they were made well. It's a powerful image to have in your mind to know that if I can get in the presence of God, everything will change in my life. And you got to grab to that word and you got to hold tight to that word. You got to just know that's been the focus of our church is to have the presence of the Holy Spirit in this room so that when lost people come through the door, there's a conviction that comes into their heart. When sick people come into this room, there's a drawing to the altar of God to, to have a healing released into their lives. The, in the presence of God is fullness of joy. Times of refreshing are in the presence of God. And when people touch Jesus, they receive healing. He went about healing the sick, and all who came to him were healed. In one of the ways that Jesus referred to himself in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 9, he referred to himself as a physician. In 9, chapter 11, and verse 12. Nine, he, Matthew 9, 11, and 12. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and the sinners? 
And when Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. He said, man, these, the, the people that are sick need me to come and heal their bodies. And here's the thing. When we talk about healing, we often refer to it as a bodily healing. And I do as well, that God wants to heal the sick. But there are three areas of our lives that need healing. You're a spirit. You live in a body. You possess a soul. And God wants to heal all three areas of your life. He wants to heal your wounded spirit. There are so many people that are in our church, that are in this congregation, that have a broken spirit. They were at another church. They were in another relationship. They were in something where something came and spoke over them, or something happened to them, and they've been down, and they can't get up. It seems like they keep trying, they keep coming to church, but they're living with a broken spirit. And I'm here to tell you, God wants to heal your broken spirit. God wants to restore your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions. Every area of your life, God wants to bring healing into that area. He wants us living victorious. Amen? In Proverbs 18, verse 14, the spirit of man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? He said, man, if if your spirit's strong, God will sustain you through sickness. But if you've got a broken spirit, you need to be restored in your spirit. In 3 John 2, beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, as healing comes to your mind, healing comes to your your emotions, and God brings healing in in your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. God wants to bring healing. Every person in this room needs to understand, God wants us living healthy. God wants us living whole. And you've got to embrace that and say, you know what, that is for me. Here's the thing. God heals us in three different ways. And I'm going to give you the three different ways that God heals us. He heals us naturally. He heals us medically. And he heals us miraculously. In those three areas of our lives, God uses three different ways to heal us. Naturally, our bodies are made to heal. If you cut yourself shaving and you get a little cut there, when I was on Plavix, if I cut myself when I, when I had the first stent put in my, in my chest, I had a stent put in, they put me on Plavix, and if I cut myself shaving, I couldn't get it to stop bleeding. It was like a mess. But I'm just telling you, if you cut yourself shaving, if you scratch your hand, in two or three days, it heals over. Why? Because our bodies were made to heal itself naturally. God made us that way. He made us to, to live with natural healing. And that that requires three things, right? And maybe more, but three things that I wrote down that I know affect my natural body's healing. One is my diet. If I'm eating wrong, if I'm not eating the right foods, if I'm not allowing myself to get the right intake, then what happens? My body is slow in healing itself, and it has a hard time healing itself. So a proper diet, the proper environment, the air. If you're living in a house that has mold in it, and you're in there breathing those those, those mold... uh, spores and all those things, all of a sudden your body doesn't heal naturally. If, you, if, if you're not exercising, and I'm not here to get on a health kick with us, I'm just telling you, your body was made to heal naturally, and that is from God, healing from God naturally. But if the environment's wrong, if you're not exercising, if you're not eating the right foods, sometimes that is delayed in our lives. The second way God heals us is medically. God heals us medically. I believe God uses doctors and medicine to assist our bodies in the healing process. As a young kid, I was accident prone, man. I had accidents all the time. It seemed like every, every couple of weeks I was getting stitches somewhere. I, and now at 61 years old, I look at my, my body, I'm, I had stitches there, I had stitches there, I had stitches there, I had stitches on my elbow. I could just go all around. One time I was chasing my brother around the kitchen table, uh, the dining room table, or the living room table, and I knocked this glass thing off and hit the ground. And I threw my knee on top of that trying to catch him, sliced my knee open. Had to go get stitches. But God used doctors to stitch me up. That was going to take a long time to heal without a doctor. And I love the doctors of this house. We've got some great doctors that are here and nurses that are here and first responders. And I thank God for them. And God uses them to bring healing into our bodies and to speed up that healing. One time I had had pain in my left knee. And I was hurting so bad, and I went to see Dr. Paul, and he laid me down on the thing and did some examinations and things. He's a chiropractor in town and a dear friend of this house, and I'm laying there, and Dr. Paul's checking me out, and he goes, oh, oh, it's your, it's your, your right ankle. 
I said, no, doc, it's my left knee. I can't, I can't hardly walk. He said, yeah, but the reason you're having problems in your left knee is your, 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 your right ankle is out. And he popped and cracked my right ankle and my left knee quit hurting. Like, I'm not, I leave out like, what in the world, man? But I'm telling you, God uses doctors and God uses medicine to heal us. Here's what Proverbs 17:22 said. A merry heart does good like a medicine. That's the word of the Lord. A merry heart does good like a medicine. And Zach was just talking about Ezekiel 47. In Ezekiel 47 and verse 12, along the bank of the river on the side of that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. And the leaves will not wither. Their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month. Because their water flows from the sanctuary, their fruit will be for food and their leaves will be for medicine. God's teaching us. Two times he talks about medicine in the Bible. And he says, listen, it's good. Now, I don't want to live on medicine. And there are times that we have to at times. But I, I think I just want to continue to believe that God's going to heal my body. He'll use the medicine to support me and help me. But I want to get free from it. Amen? Amen. Doctors are called practicing physicians, but God is not a practicing physician. He's the creator of our bodies, and he knows how to heal us. The Bible refused to God as this, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. And we serve the Lord who heals. Amen? I'm going to give you some, 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 some uh, words from God in Exodus 15, 26. And it, it, and said this, it says this, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commands and listen to his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I put upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. In Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless the bread, your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. This is God. This is the nature of God. In Psalm 107, he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from their destructions. Our God is the healer. Healing is a result of believing in God's word. And when we believe God's word and when we stand upon God's word and we declare God's healing, we can expect God's healing to come. In Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we estranged him, stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes you are healed. Amen. This is the word of the Lord, and if you don't grab that and meditate on it and say, you know what, this is going to be my position, you've got you to you gotta solidify that in your life, that God is the healer. Healing is not what he does. Healing is who he is. It's the very nature of God. In Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the healer. If we're sick, God should be our first response, not our last resort. Anytime you feel heat, sickness starting to come on your body, it's not run to the medicine cabinet and try to get some medicine. It's get on your knees and cry out to God. It's cry out to God. It should be our first response. And if there's a delay in the healing, yes, get the medicine. Go to the doctor. Do whatever you need to do. But make that, a, make that not your first response. Make that your last response. Amen? I'm so thankful for doctors. And I believe it's a calling for some of them. And, and the apostle Paul, one of his best friends was Luke the physician. They were in jail together. And you can read about that in the Bible. God heals naturally. God heals medically. And here's the great thing. God heals miraculously. A miracle is when God intervenes in the natural process and creates and makes something supernatural. I'm a part of the supernatural healing of God. I am, I am, I am so blessed by God's supernatural healing power. Years ago, my mother was in a car wreck, and uh, I was at a conference, a, a ministry conference in Nashville, Tennessee. And, and um, I was at this conference, and I got a phone call in one of the meetings. Your mom, is a, uh, it was from a highway patrolman that went to our church, said, I need you to call me right away. I stepped outside. He said, your mom's been in a horrible car accident. You need to come home immediately. And I said, Myron, tell me, is she alive? Is she alive? He said, I can't tell you anything, Pastor Greg, but you need to come home now. 
You need to get home now. They took me to the airport. I flew home, and I got here to my mom's side. My mom was still alive. She was on life support. She was in a horrible car accident. A big, a big box truck hit the side of her car, threw her out of the car. And, and I went to her bedside, and I just stayed by her bedside praying, praying, praying. And I, I wasn't seeing any results. And Pastor Kayathan spoke to me about the healing scriptures and God's word. And I, I went home, and I had Bobby print up 17 pages of healing scriptures. And three times a day, I would go to the hospital, and I would read all 17 pages of healing scriptures. She was in a coma. She was on life support. She couldn't respond to me. But I kept believing God for healing. And I kept reading those scriptures. And Destiny was just a little baby. And I, I was going through all those pages. And they would work on her. They'd say, sir, you have to leave. I said, ma'am, in all res due respect, I'm not leaving my mother's side. And I'm going to continue to read these scriptures. You guys do what you got to do. But I'm going to read her these scriptures. And I was believing my mom could hear me. After a, a couple weeks of, of, of doing those healing scriptures, it just like out of the blue, she opened up her eyes. And she went, where's my baby? I said, Mom, are you okay? She said, I need, I need Destiny. Where's Destiny? And I went out, and I got Destiny and brought her in there. And my mom puckered up and said, give me a kiss, baby. And, and Destiny gave her a kiss. And, and my mom ended up going to heaven to be with the Lord. But I used those healing scriptures to be able to bring her back to say goodbye to her. I'm telling you, you can activate the word of God in your life, and you can see healing. And sometimes it's delayed, and sometimes it doesn't work out the way that we think it should. Just a few months ago, we prayed for Carol in this church, and Carol was just such a precious gift, Bobby's best friend and Gail's best friend. And we went to her, and we said scriptures over her and prayed over her, and she passed. And my heart was broken, and I was just so just crushed that, that we didn't see the healing manifest here on this earth. But God reminded me that he is the healer, and that doesn't change because of our circumstances. And so often we try to adjust our theology based upon our circumstances, and we can't do that. You have to stay centered on God's word. It is God's will to heal, and God heals, and he restores. And if it doesn't work out the way that you think it should or when you think it should, you can't change your theology. you got to stand firm on God's word that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he is the healer. Amen? This, the supernatural is when God puts his super on our natural. A young man was in college, and he was reading the Bible. A liberal professor walked by. The young man shouted, wow! The professor, interested in what caused the excitement, asked the young man what he was reading. The young man said, God parted the Red Sea, and the Hebrew people began to cross on dry ground. The professor stated, and he started to explain how in that period in history, there was a drought, and the Red Sea was only about three inches deep. It was not really a miracle. Oh, said the disheartened young man as he went back to reading. Wow, again, the young boy said, even more excited. The professor leaned over and said, what is it now? The young man replied, God just drowned the whole Egyptian army in three inches of water. <laughs> <laughs> in the gospel there's about 37 recorded miracles some maybe even theologians even say 45 but the bible is full of miracles and healings and supernatural things that god did in john chapter 21 verse 25 there are so many other things with, that jesus did which if it were written one by one i suppose that the world the world itself could not contain the books that would be written that was that was back thousands of years ago, the miracles that Jesus has did. He, the, things that, the thing that qualifies you for a miracle is a problem. And if you've got a problem, you're qualified for a miracle. Because God is drawn to problems. Without a problem, you don't need a miracle. And nothing is too big or too small for God. Whether it's a big supernatural miracle that Pax received or whether it's just a small thing that God did in your life that didn't, it wasn't going to happen, but God made it happen. If you need a miracle, the key is to get in God's presence. 
That's why we've been so focused, Bobby and I have been so focused about keeping this atmosphere an atmosphere of the presence of the Lord. It isn't centered around my teaching. It isn't centered around me being the preacher. Or it isn't centered around a worship team that's anointed. We need all that. I need to keep preaching the word of God. The worship team needs to keep singing. But here's the key. The presence of God is the key to the victory of this house. And where the presence of God is, there's fullness of joy. There's love overwhelming. There's, there's so many good things. If you need a miracle, get in the presence of God. God often used miracles to show that Jesus was the Messiah. The Jewish people were looking for a Messiah, and Jesus used the miracles. God used those miracles to show the people that Jesus was the Messiah. God often used miracles to, 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 to let people know that Jesus was the Son of God. God wanted the people to know that he was the Son of God. God often uses miracles to authenticate his word to back up his word, to do what he said he would do. And God still wants people to know that he is the healer. And how is he going to do that? He's going to do that through you and I. That we realize that these hands are anointed for healing. It's not just on the healing evangelist. And I'm so thankful for the gift of God in David Turner. I'm so thankful for the gift of God in Bill Prankard, who carries healing all over Canada. I'm thankful for the gifts of healing that are in the room. But I want you to know something. According to God's word, he sent his disciples out to heal the sick. And we are his disciples, we are his followers, and we are commanded by God to heal the sick. Amen. Healing's not an option. And I'm here to tell you, as long as I'm the pastor of Destiny Church, healing is not an option in our services. That's why every Sunday we open up the altars, we bring the elders up, we bring anointed prayer warriors up here to pray, to lay hands on the sick. As long as I'm the pastor of this church, we're going to keep praying for the sick. We're going to keep believing for souls to be saved every Sunday. Why? Because that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't understand churches that never pray for the sick. I don't understand. I can't comprehend it in my mind to say we believe on it, but we never give opportunity for it to happen. And I'm here to tell you, that's who we are. It's not what we do. That's who we are. In Matthew chapter 10, everybody go to Matthew chapter 10, and let's look at verses 5 through 8. These 12... Jesus sent out and he commanded them, saying, Do not go the way of the Gentiles. Do not enter the city of Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, what does he say there to do? Preach, saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. Num verse number eight Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. He's telling the disciples, This is your assignment. In Luke chapter 9, verse 1, then he called the 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all demons to cure all diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Luke 10, 8, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as set before you and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Listen, you can say to me all you want to, Pastor Greg, what if, what if they don't get healed? I say to you, what if they do? You say, well, what if, I'm, what if I'm not good enough and I'm not righteous enough? Really? You think somehow you could be righteous enough? You think somehow your good works are going to do this? It isn't about me. It isn't about you. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God the Father and God the Son saying, go heal the sick. Take yourself. Go out into the highways and the byways and minister healing to the sick. It's for every believer. We kind of put it off and say, well, this is just on those special occasions for the Sunday or the special occasions when we have a healing service. No, it's for every believer, every man and woman of God, every young man. You don't have to be 25 to do this. You don't have to be 35. You can be in your teens. You can be a child. There's no big Holy Spirit, little Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit of God, and he is the healer. And if you will step out in faith, if you'll call those things that are not as though they are, your God will back you up and he'll do what he said he would do. Amen. Listen, you can't live your life focused on what didn't happen. 
Man, I, I could sit up here and go through story after story of people that didn't get healed, but I could tell you far more stories of people that did, and I choose to focus on what God is doing and what God has done. I'm not going to focus on what didn't happen and let that put a wet blanket over my life and just have me living in depression. No, I don't know what it didn't, why it didn't happen, but I'm not here to try to figure out why it didn't happen. I'm here to obey God's word, step into healing, and lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Come on, this is for every believer. Yeah. Romans 14, 6, therefore, it is of faith. That, that, you don't have this, guys. Don't look, you don't have this scripture. This, when I was back there praying, the Lord just gave it to me again. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be fulfilled to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, but those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As In verse number 17, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed. God gives life to, God gives life to the dead, and he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. This is the scripture. This is the word of God. This is our assignment to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Let's look at the life of Jesus. In Mark chapter 1, 40 and 42. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and he touched him, and he said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. The leper asked Jesus, if you're willing. He didn't doubt the capacity of Jesus to heal him. He just wanted to know if you're willing. Are you willing to do this? And I think so many times in our lives, that's the way we approach God, if you're willing. Listen, you can't find anywhere in this book that says that God is not willing to heal. You can't find anywhere in this book where it says that, that God might not heal you that you might not receive your healing. Well, you say, what, what if I don't receive my healing? What if you do? What if you just go to God and believe God for supernatural things and it really happens? Amen. He asked Jesus if he's willing. Jesus said, I am. We all know that God can heal. We just don't know if he's willing. In Matthew 14, 14, when Jesus went out, he saw the great multitude. He was moved with compassion for them and he healed the sick. God loves people. And if you've got something that's hurting you, you've got something that's hurting your spirit, you've got a crushed spirit, you've got a wounded spirit, God loves you. If you've got a wounded soul, your mind, will, and emotions, because things didn't happen the way that you thought they should happen, or when you thought they should happen, I'm telling you right now, you need to ask God to heal that place of brokenness, and trust God, and believe God. You got to believe again. You got to get your faith back up. You can't live in what if it doesn't happen. You got to gravitate towards, I know God is my healer, and I know he is willing. Yeah. Amen. Jesus wasn't trying to prove anything. He just loves people. He didn't heal people to bring attention to himself. He often said, don't tell anybody. Jesus told the leper, don't tell anybody. Healing is not about us. It's about the power of God. And if you could get this into your spirit, that this is all about the power of God, wanting to be released on a generation of people that are wounded and broken. They are so, they are so messed up out there. And if we could come with the gospel truth that Jesus is is the healer. He's still healing people today. He's still healing babies. He's still healing seniors. Our God is more than able, and he is willing. Amen. Amen. It's not about us. It's about the power of God. And I know, I know there's this thing. You can't heal anybody. I, listen, I understand I don't have the power to heal anybody, but that doesn't change the fact that he said, go heal the sick. He told me to go heal the sick. And my job is to constantly be throwing the glory to God. It isn't about me. It isn't about my hands. It's about him and his touch. And if through me he can get a touch to that person, they can be healed. Amen? Healing is not about us. It's about the power of God. In Matthew 4, 23 and 24, Jesus went about Galilee teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. His fame went throughout all of Syria, and they brought to him all the sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments. 
those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them all. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too intense for God. There's nothing too small for God. Jesus healed all that came to him. He, didn't, he, didn't, he did not hold back his healing. Jesus brought all that came to him, and he also healed people that didn't come to him. There's a story in Luke chapter 13, and it tells of a woman who was bent over, and Jesus called to her. And it says this, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. She was bent over and could no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called to her, and he said to her, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. She, she was just there in the meeting, and Jesus went to her. He called to her. In Luke 6, 6, there was a man that had a withered hand that did not call unto Jesus. But when Jesus saw his need, he was moved with compassion, and he healed him. In John 9, there was a blind man sitting by the gate. He didn't come to Jesus, but Jesus went to him, and he healed him. When, Peter went to, when Jesus went to Peter's house in Matthew chapter 8, verse 14, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and served him. Jesus touched her, and the fever left. If you could get it into your mind, all I need is to touch Jesus. All I need is to grab a hold of the hem of his garment. All I need is to touch Jesus, and if you can touch Jesus, healing will come to your body. Amen. Amen. As many as touched him were healed. And in Luke 6, in verse 17 and 18, he came down and he stood with them on a level place with the crowd of his disciples. And a great multitude of people came from all of Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. And they came to him to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. This is, this is the heart of Jesus. This is what he does. It's God's desire to heal. And I know in our carnal nature, in our natural minds, we say, well, what if it doesn't happen? You can't let your mind go there. What if it doesn't happen? Listen to me. How many know it's God's will for everybody to be saved? I mean, I, I can show you in the Word of God in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. What's he saying? It's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Does everybody get saved? No. Is it God's will for everybody to, to, to get saved? Yes. It's God's will for everybody to be healed. Does everybody get healed? Not on this earth, but sometimes in the glory cloud, sometimes in heaven. I can't explain it, but I'm not going to focus my life on those who did not get healed and what didn't happen. i got to get my mindset on what God said. And if he said it, I believe it. And if I believe it, it'll be made so in my life. Jesus is the healer, and if you're sick, you can come to Jesus, and he'll heal your body. Yes. Amen. God's desire is for everyone to be saved, and God's desire is for everyone to be healed. Miss Gail, if you could come to the keyboard. The apostles carried on the work of Jesus. In Acts chapter 3, the lame man was laid daily at the gate. Peter and John, going into the hour, uh, at the hour of prayer, going into the temple, see the lame man there. The same thing Jesus did, they did. The same thing that they heard about, saw with their eyes, they said, look, this is not just for Jesus. This is for us. And the man says, I... I, I can you heal me? He says, um, he begging alms of them. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I give to thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And what I love is that Peter bent down and lifted him up. He helped him get to healing. God wants to use your hands to help heal people. God wants to use you as a healing agent in this earth to carry the gospel to the ends of the earth and to bring the good news to people that need a healing. So when you're in the store and you see somebody in a wheelchair, or you see somebody holding their head, or you just, God gives you a word and says, hey, go pray for that person. I like what Zach says. I always start everything with a question. Zach says, hey, could I pray for you? Do you have something going on that I could pray with you about? He doesn't go over there and say, I've got a word for you. I've come. He says, hey, he goes over. And I think this is the key for you and I. If we would take these hands and lay hands on the sick, the Bible says they shall recover. Yes. Yes, 
let, let me just ask the question. It, if you thought one out of 10 people was going to get healed, would you do it? If you just thought, if I lay hands on 10 people dying with cancer and one of them gets healed, would you, would you take the risk of saying, I'll pray for the other nine? Absolutely I would. Because I don't care what you think about me. It's God's word. I don't care if you think, you prayed for me, I didn't get healed. I, look, I'm doing what God said to do. It's not my responsibility to heal you. It's my responsibility to lay hands on you and declare God's word over you. And then God takes over at that point. And I'm here to tell all the believers in this room, you got to stop thinking it's for the evangelist. You got to stop thinking it's for the preacher or the elders. This is every believer that makes a decision to follow God and to follow Christ. He said that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. It'll quicken your mortal bodies. And that which Christ did, you will do. And greater works. Greater works. He's the healer. Jesus wants to heal. And he wants to use you and I to do it. I'm telling you, there was so much rejoicing the day that they said Pax made it through and he's going to be fine. On that prayer chain, man, hallelujah, glory to God. People were rejoicing. Why? Because God answered our prayer. Today, God wants to answer your prayer. He wants to heal, restore, and make brand new. When my heart went to V-Fib and I dropped dead and I was, I was you know, out and when I came to, and Bobby began to show me all the pictures. And one of the pictures she showed me was me laying on the hospital bed, on life support, and in my ears, on a, a podcast, she was playing T.D. Jakes preaching on healing. I was in a coma. I don't even remember it. But when I came to and I saw that, I realized my wife was playing the Word of God so that I could hear the Word of God and my spirit would come alive. Jim Johnson was a, a, a man at our church in Ohio, and he heard what had happened to me, and he called and left a voicemail for Bobby on the phone, and he prayed over me, heal, restore, and make brand new. He said, something come against his heart, but God, I just speak a brand new heart, a brand new heart, a brand new heart. He said it four or five times, a brand new heart. My spirit grabbed onto that. I can't explain it to you. But after three days in a coma, I came out of that thing. Why? Because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. You say, well, what if? What if? You can't go there in your mind. You got to stay in faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And when you're not seeing it, when you're not getting the results, don't waver. Don't change. Don't change your position based on a result. You say, you know what? It doesn't matter the result. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to say, thus saith the Lord. Could everybody stand up on your feet with me? The Bible says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. He's saying, much is available through prayer, and healing is in the atonement of the cross. Bow your hearts to the Lord. Lord, I know your word will not return to you void. So, Father, I've given the scripture, I've given the word, I've given the truth. Lord, I pray that there will be healings in this service right now. If you need a healing in your body, lift your hands to the Lord right now. Just hold it up all over the room. I declare over you right now the word of the Lord. By his stripes, you are healed. Now just open your mouth and just receive. Say, Father, I receive that word over my physical body, over my soul, over my spirit. I receive right now healing in my heart, in my life. In the name of Jesus, I receive it according to your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody bow your heads and, and, and just put your hands down. And let me just ask all over the room today, if you're here this morning and, 
and your heart is not where it needs to be with the Lord, you've never given your life to Christ, maybe you're just in a backslidden state, man, where you're just not walking where you need to be walking with the Lord. And you say, Pastor, this word speaks to me because I know God wants me saved. I'm not where I need to be, and today I want to surrender everything to Jesus. If that's you, would you just hold your hand up high where I can see it? Just lift it up so I can see it and pray with you this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Do it now. Just do it now. Do it now. Another one over here? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I see you over there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Before I dismiss everybody, would you guys come? Would you come stand with me? Just come pray with me. Ma'am, raise your hand. Come with me. Just come stand. Any others that want to come, just come right now. But I mean, this means the world to me in this church. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me hold your hands. I want you to join me in this prayer. And let's just recommit ourselves to the Lord. Father, say this. Father, I thank you for your love. I know you died for me. I choose to live for you. I'm asking you right now to forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. I love you, Jesus. I know you're real. I need your forgiveness. I receive it, and I give you my life. I'm going to serve you forever. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. It's the best. I've got some things for you. Amen. 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 Listen, there, that little card that's on there says, I've decided. If you'd fill that out and give that to me, I'll have somebody reach out to you this week and connect with you because you can't do this on your own. Although it is a personal decision to walk with Christ, we need each other. And there's strength in numbers. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. And today, I believe the Lord is changing your destiny. And he's opening up a door of opportunity for you. Lord, I thank you for the message today. I thank you for the worship. I thank you for the healings that have happened in this room. And Lord, by your stripes, we are healed. And Lord, I pray that you go with us today and just kind of guide us, Lord, that this week will be a, de- a week of divine impartation. Lord, help people to step out of their comfort zone and to pray for the sick. And as the sick are saved, God, the gospel will be preached and lives will be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, uh, immediately following the service, we're doing water baptism back here on the patio. We've got several getting baptized. If you've got a few minutes and you don't have to rush off, just stand around and pray with them and celebrate them. And if you need water baptism, we have everything for you back here. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you next Sunday. Amen.